Well, hello, hello, and welcome back to Black Hammer Arts. And for the second video of this year, we are going to be making a leaf hook. So let's get into it. All right, so today we're gonna to be making a leaf hook, as I said, loosely based on this one here, which is one of the last ones I made. I'm gonna make the neck a little bit longer here so I can put the holes instead of being down here, up here. It's gonna make it look nicer. Um, yeah, basically you just secure that to your wall, two nails, you can hang stuff on it, whatever you want. This leaf up here is just decorative and I think it looks really nice. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is just kind of draw a taper. So I'm gonna be turning it every time. You could also do this and turn it every other time. I do that sometimes. Just draw that down to a pretty, pretty much all the way on the point. You might have to take two, two heats to do this. Okay, so I'm on the second heat. I'm gonna isolate the end here. And try not to hit my anvil like that. Also, try not to draw this down too thin. It's easy to actually break the head of what will become your leaf off. All right, so you can see, kind of got it like that. That's what, that's what I want it to look like, that's good. And now in just the, the dark, it's getting down to a really dark, almost black. Now, I'm just kind of taking out some of the marks. So uh, you can use pretty much any bit of iron for this. I'm using just a piece of, a little piece of rebar, probably five inches long, you could use less. So for this third heat here, I'm just gonna be kind of refining out the neck a little bit. And then if I have any heat after that, I'll start squaring it up a little bit. And you'll see what I mean there in a minute. Yeah, it's looking about right. Just gonna refine this neck a little bit more. I've switched to a hammer with a slightly sharper edge on it for this because I want to be able to get kind of back in there. I probably could do this with the other hammer too. So I'm drawing this end down to a taper as well. Uh, not probably in this heat, but this heat I'm just squaring everything up. And I can already see this is gonna be longer than I need. So back to the fire. Okay, this is a bit too long, so I'm gonna cut it right here. And something the guy I learned a bit from told me is if you can cut it most of the way through and then hit, not on the front so you don't blunt the edge, but just off it like that, that helps a lot of the time. All right, I'm gonna draw this down to a taper now. Probably gonna bring this over to the horn to finish the taper. I often like to do that. That way I don't uh, I don't hit the edges of my anvil too much. Okay, so I kind of got this just drawn into a long spike. I've beveled the edges a little bit, by the way. Um, that's just as simple as turning on the corner and. You know, taking the corner, kind of like that. 
Um, very simple. I got the mass isolated on this end, tapered on both ends. And the next step is going to be to curl this into what's called a rat tail, just a very tight little curl, and then flip it over and bend it the other way. We'll see if I can get that done on one heat. It may take two. My tongs are having a hard time holding on to these. Probably gonna need to heat that up just a little bit more. It just got kind of a partial heat here. It's not really a really a full heat. Just heating the very tip. And here's one of those few scenarios where you do actually use that stupid brushing hit where you kind of go like that. See, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I want it to look there. Looking pretty good. Um, you see in movies sometimes, you'll see guys like to draw material out and they'll just be like hitting like this. Stupid. I, I, it makes me laugh every time. But um, in this particular case, you actually do kind of kind of brush it like that. Um, so yeah, that turned out pretty good. Now, I might could have beveled this a little more. But uh, yep, pretty good. So next heat should be the bend. I'm probably going to start that. I'm going to, um, I won't have a lot of time to explain it while I'm doing it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it out of the fire, I'm going to quench the very tip, you won't see me do that, you'll just see it get kind of cold, you'll see it come cold, so the rest of this will all be hot, and this very tip will be cold so I don't deform it, because otherwise you're going to hit right on here, and you'll wind up deforming it if you don't cool it down, so yeah, I'll heat this up, cool this tip, and then I'll hit it like that, and then I'll bring it over to the horn to adjust it into a nice hook shape, after that I'm going to make the leaf, and then twist and we'll be about done. So you can see how I've cooled the tip off there. Straightening this out. See if I was hitting on that and it was hot, I would have just deformed that. Right there, looking pretty good. All right. So you might be thinking, if you know how, how leaves are made, you might be thinking that I got that backwards. And you would, in fact, be wrong. Because when I twist it, that'll be rectified. Alright, you should enjoy this if you haven't seen leaves be made before. So one thing you actually have to remember is don't go out of your way to make these leaves symmetrical leaves are not symmetrical. I mean, they should be kind of roughly symmetrical, but... I'm gonna get some more heat. So here I'm just kind of planishing it a little bit, getting it to look. A little more how I want it to because I want some of this texture on there, but I don't don't want it to be spotty, so. Gonna need to get a little more heat on this leaf here. This is mainly just about texture and then also just kinda seeing, making sure I like the shape of everything. And sometimes I'll, um, actually, something the guy I made my first leaf hook taught me to do was this. Um, He'd usually have a 
already kind of made groove for this. But it helps it to look more like a leaf. Just, I'm just hitting in the middle here, if you can see. If not, oh well. And that's looking pretty good. So I'll brush this up. So here I'm just kind of marking in where I'm going to put the holes. And I'm going to dovetail them out quite a bit after I get my thing in position. Just got to make sure you're very centered. And I'll give that one more tap in that spot if I can get it to stay still. All right, then I'm gonna put one just above there. Move a little higher. There we go. Okay. For this particular kind of job, it's usually a good idea to have gloves, but I forgot to get any. Probably get a good deal faster at this if I did it more often. Yeah, okay. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna straighten this out slightly. Perfect. Oops. And there we go. Got a nice clean hole. You can start to see the frog's eye there, where I was punching it on the other side. I know I'm kind of asking for it, working this cold, but I think it'll be all right. All right, so we finished it. Uh, I brushed it up off camera and put a little bit of oil on it. You don't really need to see me do that, but just, you know, took a little bit of oil and that way it'll keep it from rusting quite as easily. There are a couple of imperfections from where I probably took it too low of a heat. Um, so doing this again, I probably would have worked at a slightly higher heat and not, not worked it so hard into a black heat. But yeah, overall, turned out pretty good. The concept was fairly sound. And um, until next time, farewell, wherever you fare.